What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to install ArmBN on your ARM-based single board computer. Now ArmBN is an awesome Linux desktop distribution for these single board computers and this is actually my favorite desktop environment to run on these single board computers. On screen now you'll see a bunch of boards. Some of them you might recognize, some of them you might not. I have the Tinker board, some friendly ARM stuff, some Pine stuff, and I also have some hard kernel stuff here like the XU4. One board that's missing from the pile here is the Raspberry Pi, and that's on purpose because ArmBN doesn't support the Pi. You'll hear me mention it a couple times in this video, but I'm kind of glad they don't because a lot of it would be focused on the Pi, and we need more for these other single board computers that are out there. And luckily, ArmBN supports a ton of these boards. They have support for the C2, the XU4, the NanoPi PCT4, the Rock Pro 64. There are a ton of boards supported here, and the only way to really tell if your board's supported is to check their website. But today, I'm going to show you how to install it on your single board computer. So this is ArmBN. It's a really nice Linux desktop that's easy to use. It's very powerful. Now, if you really want to go into depth with it, you can. Unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi isn't supported with these builds. The Raspberry Pi already gets a lot of love in the first place, so I'm really glad to see that these other boards are supported with ArmBN. You can check their website. I'll leave links in the description. There's a lot of apps pre-installed. Some of these I have installed myself. I'll show you how to set up a few. But basically, I'm going to go over installing this to an SD card. Then we're going to boot into the operating system on your board of choice. We're going to update the system. I'll also show you how to install the full LibreOffice suite and GIMP. In order to install this to an SD card, we're going to need to go to another machine. I'm going to be using a Windows machine, but this will work on Mac, Windows, or Linux. So it's got you covered there. It's really easy to do. We're going to flash the SD card. We're going to place it back into the single board computer of your choice. I'll show you how to get everything set up. I'll also go over updating the system, installing the full LibreOffice suite, and GIMP. So with that out of the way, let's move over to my Windows machine and get this SD card set up. All right, so let's go ahead and get ArmBN installed. I'm going to be using a 32 gigabyte SD card. I've already placed it into a reader on my PC. So I have my 32 here. Like I mentioned, you can use an eMMC module as long as you have an adapter to flash it just like we would with an adapter for an SD card. First thing we want to do is head over to the ArmBN website and find the image we're going to be using for our specific board. So from here, we're going to go to download. If you know the manufacturer, you can just click up here, let's say Asus or Asus, Tinkerboard or the Tinkerboard S. It is supported. I'm going to be going with the XU4, so I'm going to be using a hard kernel, Odroid XU4. We'll scroll down and find the downloads. So this is where it's a little tricky for some boards. Some boards do support both ARMB and Stretch as a desktop and Bionic. This one here, I think they just phased out Stretch and we're using strictly Bionic as a desktop. So this is the desktop mainline kernel. This here is the mainline kernel for Stretch, but it's not the desktop variant. So if you're looking to use a desktop environment, make sure it is the desktop mainline. I'm going to use the direct download. Now it's going to download, it's around 408, 500 megabytes, but when we extract it, it'll be close to two gigabytes. Next thing we need is an application to flash the image to an SD card. Like I said, this will work with Mac, Linux, or Windows. From the drop down here, have Windows X64 Portable. That's the one I'm going to be going with. But if you're using Mac, you can download it here. Or if you're using Linux, you can download it here. I'm going to give this a little while to finish up, and then I'm going to place it on my desktop. One other thing you might need if you're using Windows is WinRAR or 7-Zip to extract the image. I will leave all of the links in the description. Okay, so I have everything downloaded. I've just placed it on my desktop for easy access. This will probably be located in your downloads folder. First thing we need to do is extract the ArmBN image that we're going to be using. Now I'm using the XU4 image. Yours will be named differently. Right click, extract. So I've extracted my image. It's in a folder here. I'm just going to move the zip out of the way. Now we need to launch Etcher. We're going to go ahead and double click on it. You might be prompted to allow this application to make changes. From within Etcher, we're going to select image. Now the image we're going to be choosing is the one we just extracted. Mine's on my desktop in the ArmBN folder. And it's going to be right here. 
Like I said, it'll be close to 2 gigs. Disk image file for the Odroid XU4. Double click. It's going to load it up. Next thing we want to do is make sure we're flashing to the correct SD card. I'm just using a 32 gig. It's chosen here. Continue and flash. What this is going to do is flash the image to the SD card, then it's going to validate the files. It really depends on how fast your SD card is, but it shouldn't take long. So the SD card is now ready to place into the single board computer of your choice, and we're going to boot it up. So you're going to need to plug in your HDMI, the SD card, all your peripherals like your mouse and keyboard, and then we'll boot up. There's a few things we need to do before we get into the desktop, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. On the initial boot, we're going to get a screen that looks something like this. Don't be afraid, it's really easy to use. We're just going to have to change the username and the default passwords. I'm going to go over that right now. I will zoom in so it's easier to see. So here, as you can see, it says Odroid XU4 login. It might say something different depending on what board you're using. But the default login is root. Press enter, and the default password is 1234. You won't see it show up, but press enter. Now we're going to have to enter the current password, which is 1234, and press enter. Now we're going to have to enter a new password. I'm just going to be using password. You can use whatever you'd like. When you're finished filling it out, press enter. We're going to have to retype that same password we just created. Mine's password. Now we're going to have to enter a name. I'm just going to go with ETA, press enter, enter new Unix password. I'm going to go with password again. We'll have to retype that. Full name. You really don't have to fill this out correctly. I just usually do ETA for my phone number one, for my work phone one, home phone one, other one. Even if you filled it out, this is going nowhere. Nobody's going to get your information. Is this information correct? Press Y and enter. Now it's going to start the RBN desktop environment. This only has to be done on the initial setup. So don't worry. Every time you boot up, you won't have to do this. It'll boot right into the desktop. All right, so here we are. The first thing I like to do is a full update with any operating system. You will need to be connected online with this. Since I have an XU4, it doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. I'm just using a cheap USB adapter, or you can use Ethernet. If your board has Wi-Fi, more than likely Armbian will support it. If you're familiar with Linux, you can just go up to Applications, open the terminal, and do a Git update and a Git upgrade. If you're not that familiar with Linux, Armbian has made this very user-friendly. We're going to go up to Applications, Settings, Armbian Config. We're going to open this up. We're going to grab our keyboard, put our password in that we made, and it's going to bring us here. So the first item on the list is system. Press enter. Make sure OK is highlighted. Use your keyboard arrow keys. Scroll down to firmware. This is just a quick way to run the apt git update and apt git install upgrade. So we're just going to press enter. It's going to ask us if we want to update the board's firmware. Press yes. Now this really depends on how fast your internet is. Just let it finish up. It will ask you to reboot. I'm not going to reboot, but I definitely recommend doing that. From the same menu, I'm going to go to cancel and I'm going to install some software. So we can go down to software. There's some applications that we can install in here without having to ever touch the terminal ourselves. One of the main things I like to install is LibreOffice. This is the full suite. I'm going to press enter. It's going to download LibreOffice, do everything it needs to do in the background, and do a full install for us. This isn't totally necessary, but this is something I like to have on all of my machines. So the last thing you need to do is just really start using the desktop. Get accustomed going up to Applications, find what you want to run, and run it from here. We have Internet with the Chromium web browser, Multimedia, MPV Media Player, and I just installed the full LibreOffice suite. So I have LibreDraw, Calculate. This is really awesome to have on your Linux machine. Now, if you want a real image editor, I would install GIMP. It's really easy to do. Unfortunately, it's not in the packages. We're going to click out of here. Applications. Terminal Emulator. 
and I'm just going to type in sudo apt dash git install gimp press enter it's going to ask us for a password it's going to fetch all the gimp files for us press y and enter and now we have an awesome open source image editor applications graphics gimp This is pretty much free Photoshop, and it works really well on these boards. I've tested this on the XU4, the C2, the NanoPi T4, Rock Pro 64, and a couple other boards. But overall, I find it works well on all of them. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I just wanted to get you up and running with RMBN. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, Google is your best friend. If you run into an issue, Search online first. Somebody's probably run into that same issue, and you can find a fix for it real quick. Armbian also has a full forum, and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.